My skin is black. What you oh. looking My at? My skin yeah. is black. I feel what so good to be black right now. Is black. <laughs> what you look Welcome to episode 133 of the Black in Fashion podcast. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I would love to make sure I call to action all of the amazing things that we have going on. Um, By the time this episode airs and you hear us, (laughs) we will be basically in April, um, which April (laughs) is the start of Black Fashion Month. So happy Black Fashion Month if you're listening. (laughs) Um, and of course, we want you guys to send in your black notes. So any um, advice that you want, any tips that you want when it comes to being um, a creative in the fashion business, um, growing, excelling in your career, definitely reach out to us. If you have stories that you just want to tell, um, to just shed light on different topics and stuff like that, definitely send in your black notes. Um, we would love to also feature all our black creatives in our I. Um, BMF campaign like what does it mean to be black in fashion to you we'd love to hear your stories your features and of course guys as Issa Rae told us it's good to network across <laughs> um, to make sure that we are promoting one another opposed to we're networking up so having features on smaller platforms is just as crucial as having features on larger platforms as well even though our platform is large pal <laughs> so today I am joined with Chelsea Chelsea thank you so much for joining me today how are you Thank you for having me. I'm doing well. I'm doing well. Thank you so much for even just inviting me on here. Of course. Savannah. Of course. And Chelsea is a streetwear crochet designer and a fiber artist. And we are going to take a deep dive um, into that for sure. <laughs> um, House of Chelsea B is an up and coming crochet apparel brand that began back in the fall of 2016 with it being just a hobby for Chelsea. And then she started and now has bloomed into an amazing business. Her mission is to become a new perspective in both the fiber and fashion community. I love me a textile girl. Okay. <laughs> So can yeah. you uh, let's start out by telling a little bit about yourself and your background and where you're from and how you got started. All righty. Well, again, I'm Chelsea V. Um, again, I'm a streetwear crochet designer uh, from the south side of Chicago. Um, kind of got started. I was already always into art growing up. Like I never watched cartoons and cartoons anything, but my mom will tell you like I was always into. Um, home improvement, art shows, et cetera, et cetera. Um, And so quite naturally, I knew for a fact that would be something that I wanted to go into as a career choice. Um, And so my journey went as, my journey went as such, uh, I ended up going off to study at the College of Art and Design in Savannah, Georgia. And I got my BFA in surface design and textiles um, back in 20, May of 2019, came back, um, worked as a visual artist for a little while um, here in Chicago and then moved on to doing some work over at the Nike Lab here in Chicago. Um, and then, yeah, now I, within the past, what, three, four years, I have been fortunate enough to work with, you know, artists and the up-and-coming rappers and, uh, I don't know, actress, actors, actresses, you know, for their different pro- projects. That's like a quick sums up. I've been crocheting for about uh, about nine years now. Mm-hmm. So we, we almost at the decade. We almost at the decade mark. But um, right. yeah. who taught you how to crochet? Actually, my um, homeroom teacher in high school by the name of Meg, Meg McGivney. If you guys um, go to my YouTube channel, um, you'll see a, me talk about it in a few videos on there. But yeah, she actually taught me when I was about like a sophomore, junior in high school. And then, you know, the funny thing is um, my great grandmother Pauline Winters, she actually crocheted. I never met her a day in my life. Uh, she passed away way before I was born, but it just so happened that she was the only other family member in my, only other member of my family that crocheted. And then here I come years later doing the exact same thing that she um, did, wow. but in a different way. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. So yeah. tell me about Thank some you. of your biggest achievements thus far. Like what has been like, um, like some aha moments and like some, <gasps> Like those ones where you just like, oh my God, this is everything. Like some, with some of the people that you work with, or maybe it's a special project that you worked on. What was your uh, favorite project that you've worked on thus far? Favorite project thus far was um, this past uh, fall uh, for the. I did. I partnered with Nike for the Air Force One 40th anniversary, and the reason why that was so impactful for me, out of all of the things that I've done, was because that's how. I entered into just sneaker or streetwear fashion. Um, I think the first 
I think the first thing that I got involved in with Nike was being a guest at a Air Force One customization workshop. And that's, that's a whole story in itself of how I even ended up there. And Virgil was actually the special guest and the teacher there. And so to have me three years later doing a partnership with them, um, like pretty much doing what I was pretty much be where I was a guest. Now I'm a, I'm a teacher in that same sense. So that was, that was big for me. I was able to involve my community um, and just, you know, be able to touch and I mean, be able to just mentor and inspire other artists um, in Chicago. And I think outside of that, um, definitely the young baby Tay I am music video. That was like my first step into the industry. I think that was the project that put me on the map and I could have not believed or dreamt of how far it went um i think that was the first piece or uh project that that was on the uh, new york times square new york yeah not new york times square uh so that would that really like shocked me i mean it's, it's a it's a bunch of other moments but those two by far are like my my all-time favorite at the moment dope 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 i actually want to teach a scare girl <laughs> Ooh, girl, yeah, come on over there. I've been thinking about it. I mean, I've been in New York for 10 years. I'm originally from Chicago as well. I'm pretty sure you knew that from my number. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I want to I want to teach this guy so bad. I was thinking about like, you know, going to Atlanta and taking like an adjunct role for a little while because mm-hmm. out of all of the institutions, um, like I've had a lot of employees from FIT, um, mm-hmm. from Parsons, from Pratt and the interns and the people that I've had from SCAD, when I say the education level and the talent level trumps these New York designers is crazy to me. Like, mm-hmm, it's something mm-hmm. about, like, that SCAD curriculum that just taps in for me and, like, really creates, like, really, really true artists. And I've noticed that from people that I've had on my team, the difference between them getting their design degrees here and going to SCAD. SCAD is probably, yeah. like, it's so top tier for me. Yeah, they definitely, I would definitely say my professors have been, like, I talk, I every time I'm in an interview, I end up talking about my professors one of them being Sarah when I say they truly encourage you to do what it is you want to do and I'm fortunate enough to have studied textile you know design so it was a little bit of a different uh, it was a little bit of a shift when I got into that major because you know with the fashion major is so uh it's in, in a way it's subjective but when you get over into that textile industry, they truly want you to just be your authentic self and go with it, right? So they just they truly just taught me to be confident and truly walk in my essence as a textile fiber art crochet designer. If that's what I want to do, then that's what I'm going to do. Um, and same thing, say, you know, I, I always make this joke, like, if you want to make art out of peanut butter and jelly, it, like, makes a sculpture, and you tell your professor that, they're going to be like, yeah, let's do it. Let's see let's see where it goes. Right. So I truly, I truly believe that, like, being in SCAD, that atmosphere and them truly um, pushing you and encouraging you to do what it is that you do, um, that, that truly helps. Because it helps you to gain your confidence, you know what I'm saying, as, a, as an artist and as a designer. I love that. I love that. So I have a segment. It's called It's a Success or It's a Disaster. Can you tell me about a time in your career um, and in your journey that something went completely bad, um, went horrible, um, whether it was a, you know, a client or just something that you did, but you learned from the experience and it turned you into a better business person? Mm, um, You know what? Recently, uh... I had a situation where, um, I, 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 you know, you work with stylists over the years or not over the years, like well, I've worked with stylists and I think my first, um, you know, grateful to have worked on the Young Baby Tate project. However, um, it is a side of, of this industry that people don't usually see, like they see us, uh, our work on artists and things like that, but they don't know what goes on. And so I didn't understand like pulling contracts or anything. And so years later I kind of I learned from that because you do stuff for free and I'm sorry I'm, I'm sorry this is people I'm, I'm sorry I'm trying to make sure that I, I word it correctly um but can you react I'm trying to think I, I want to say what I want to say this is I, you can say whatever you want to say on here this is a raw authentic platform okay um and so it was a situation where uh I, I never got I didn't I never got paid for that for that specific project and role and so um you know years later or months later I was I was low-key taken aback because 
I didn't like I, I was just coming on as a, as an excited artist to be able to work on that project. However, I didn't understand how people could take advantage of just my artistry. You know, I'm pushing out things within 48, 24, 48 hours. And um, I remember it going oh, it's complex TV. Um, what and you it? never got I paid for it. it. Well, I saw it on Love and Hip Hop, um, wow. every, pretty much a lot of everywhere, and I never got paid for it. And then I looked up months later, and my same exact piece because I had never, I had didn't get it back for like a year, and it ended up on like a skincare commercial, um, without me knowing. And so that was a whole situation, and th- that just touched. But I just wanted to dabble into into that really quick, like. Advice. Making sure you I got your contracts in order yeah, and your you copyrights, your sure. patents, your trademarks, everything. Exactly. You should have got paid off of all of that. And honestly, since exactly. you probably still can. <laughs> but you yeah, would have to go and, after and then spend money to do it, though. Yeah. And so, um, you know, it, I, if I'm going to give some advice to younger designers, because, you know, I'm, it was a learning experience for me because I realized you have to update clauses. You have to make sure that you have contracts in place. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to make sure that you are covering all ends. And so me coming in, I, when I came in, I'm so nice. Like I was so nice and sure I'm still nice, but it's one thing to be nice, but it's another thing to know your worth and, and, and ask for that respect. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and so I, all, I, I tell my younger designers, like stand on yourself, be your biggest advocate as much as it may seem like a hassle and all of that for you to be reading to yourself or asking for accreditation and not accreditation but asking for your credit as simple as like getting tagged in something even if you're gonna do the piece pro bono you know what i'm saying really um really advocate for yourself you know um i would i mean i have i've had other experiences um because you know social media it makes everything look so beautiful and glamorous and you know everything is so peaches and cream it is not like that it's not like that it's a lot of nights where you're just crying and you want to give up you know what i'm saying you want to Throw in the towel, um, you know, you you have people like steal your work and things like that. So, um, again, it's just, that's, that's just a learning experience. I feel like I'm rambling, but no, girl, um, I understand. Uh, trust me, I literally yeah. in January just updated all my contracts. But to t- to add on to piggyback to what you said, not only do you got to make sure you have your contracts and your clauses right, you low key have to have like a lawyer on deck because Man, I have I'm my contracts that. together. I'm not telling you my contracts are tight, baby. Like they tight, mm. they still mm. break them. Mm. And with them breaking them, you guys to be on point with being, you know, collecting what is rightfully yours, you know, and standing yeah. firm on that because I can have a great contract all day and long, but half the people that be signing up contracts don't even read them, which is nope. the crazy part to me. Like you don't even read it, like you know, and or, or they'll try to I, like I have people try to sue me, and I'm always it's always comedy because I'm just like I've done everything and I've completed my contractual obligation, mm. but you must then read your contract because if you sue me, you gotta pay my lawyer fees. Mm. And you gotta yeah. sue me in my state, <laughs> so mm-hmm. I mean, like you about to set yourself up over there now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that, and that's that's one thing that you know I, I'm, st- I'm still learning that whole process. Um, but outside of that, you know, you have your crazy clients. I remember this one time, uh, and, and I, I I wouldn't say I was discouraged from it, but like I remember this one time, this girl she um she had requested me to make something that some other designer did. And, this this taught me like I never like to recreate anybody else's designs when mm-hmm. it comes to like fiber textile. Like come to me because you like my aesthetic. Come to me because you like what I do, and then I can create that for you. But she asked me to make some type of jib, Vinci like replica. Mm-hmm. And the thing was, she sent me the picture of it in motion, right? And I think it was on Rihanna. Okay. And she sent it to me in motion. So like it had like a bunch of it had like a bunch of fringe and all of that on it or whatever. Um, and so. I remember sending. I remember doing my research to go and find the the actual garment like flat. So I sent that. I sent that picture to her, and she was like all for it. So um, by the time I finished it, now mind you, this was like a tedious process. I had to work, you know, tooth and nail on it for like a good week or two two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I fit her in at the last minute because she was a friend and she really wanted it done. So I was like, okay. Fast forward, I guess she didn't like it, but it looked exactly like what it was. But you know, they try to say the customer is always right, and I That's had some bullshit. my family. <laughs> <laughs> you said it, mommy. Um, and so apparently, she didn't. She didn't like it. She 
was like, it don't. I wanted to look like Rihanna. I'm like, this is what Rihanna had on. Like, this is this is exactly what Rihanna had. It's just flat because it's not in motion. A picture you sent me, she's like twirling and all of that. So I ended up like just to cover my end. I, you know, I said, you know, I apologize if you was not satisfied. You know, because then she went into, I don't think that you put in enough effort on this, on my piece, that you do your other thing. Like, it was a, a whole nine yards, right? She and I'm like, I'm like, my, I literally ain't sleep. I, I'm fitting you in while I still got other custom orders and stuff. But I wasn't going to go back and forth. I just simply, you know, I'm still go, uh, I'm still going to give her the piece. She paid for it. I'll give her somewhat of, somewhat of her money back. Um, but I was like, that's just a note to self that I wouldn't work with her again. And then also that, um, you know, uh, sorry. And then also like the customer's not always right, but it was a learning experience. Like, look, I don't even want to recreate things unless they, uh, I don't even want to recreate stuff for like recreate any other person's design. I will find a designer and send you their, send you their way so they can recreate it for you. So they can create their own design. Mm -hmm. Come to me for what I create. Um, so that's just another instance. Yeah, definitely. Definitely have that yeah. stuff in your contracts, too. But that's... I, I want to just go back to what you said about that customer being always right stuff or whatever. When mm. you do custom or whatever, we're guessing what's in that picture. You know, and I like You're to right. put that out there. Like, we're guessing. We don't know exactly what fabric that is. We can't feel it. We can't see <laughs> it. We can't get up on it. <laughs> you know? Exactly. So it's just like, we can get as close as possible to what you're looking for, but at the end of the day, you're taking a chance. And on top of trying to guess what the material or the silhouette or whatever that is, you know, from a whole bunch of pictures, you mm -hmm. may not have the same body type as that person. So we don't know how that's going to fit on you. And the mm -hmm. color might be different because it's a goddamn picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I was just like, I think I posted this on social media one time and it's just like, y'all got to relax. And I, and I said this about the hair world and the nail world, because you know, the same happened. Like if someone shows a picture of a hairstyle, but a picture is worth a thousand words. You don't know Man. how somebody else is going to interpret that. So what you see and what I see is always going to be different, whether it's clothing, mm -hmm. hair, nails, makeup, whatever, because a picture is on, it's worth a thousand words. It depends on who the viewer is. So I'm exactly. like, y'all got to give exactly. these uh, service based businesses, people who are doing stuff for you grace, because we can only see what's right in front of us. Man. And that's all we can do. And you don't just because you don't like it does not mean that it wasn't right and that it wasn't executed effectively. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know about yeah, you, no. but in my contract ain't no refunds. <laughs> um yeah I, yeah no yeah I, i'm like i didn't buy, i didn't bought the material and i didn't put in all the hours and work to do this you know um some sometimes i do offer a refund in terms of like on my shop my e-commerce shop, shop whatever like say they didn't give me the right address or whatever or mm -hmm. like i had i got an instance somebody ordered something um and they ended up moving to like london in the matter of like a week or so after they ordered it I don't necessarily ship out of the U.S. And so I offer, in in that case, a refund based off of that. But, no, the that in that case, she wasn't right. But I, and I was trying to explain, but I was trying to be nice because... It, you can be fair. Be, you can't be nice get, in business. Be, you got to be fair in business. Exactly, exactly. And so I'm just work, uh in the beginning, because that, that happened, like, in the beginning of my sort of career. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I learned, I learned through, I learned through that. And, um, uh, it, it, it just, it's, it taught me a lot. Sorry. I always feel like I'm rambling cause I get nervous. No, um, no you good girl. We, all, we chilling. <laughs> there ain't no right or wrong way to talk to somebody and having a conversation. <laughs> you right. You right. You right, right. But no, no, she was, she wasn't right. But it taught me, it's just cause I didn't like, again, I'm always, I'm always big on representation and I'm like, I always hear about black black owned businesses and they rude and i never that's I bullshit to too <laughs> but i try to make sure i'm very professional you know what i'm saying and so yeah. i in that way i used to let people just walk all over me mm -hmm. i used to not try to state my case because i don't want to be that angry black woman or i, I don't think that i will ever be but i don't yeah. want but sometimes you gotta i'm a, me that way. i mean i've i've been in full-time entrepreneurship for about three about three no about four years now and when mm -hmm. i first started out it was the same way and even like when i was you know on my side hustle and i had a job i I feel like it was always people pleasing, people pleasing, people pleasing, just trying to mm -hmm. do whatever people want. But like getting yeah. a full time entrepreneurship, and this is my only leg to stand on when it comes to my income. I feel like it also turns you into being a no nonsense, no bullshit person. Like you're not about to, to play be. me. 
You're not about to yep. play me. You're not about to take advantage of me because this is my livelihood at the end of the day. You know, so uh, as far as um, my headspace for you trying to tell me that my work is not good, that's a mental health thing because it's just like you know you worked hard on it. And then the whole money mm -hmm. thing, you're definitely not getting it back because it's already spent. So it's a mm -hmm. way to be what they call like, and I've taken like a lot of like leadership and like different courses and stuff like that. We as black women entrepreneurs as a whole, we always feeling like we got to be that nice, nice person. And we can yeah. be nice to a certain extent. We have to be yeah. fair. And we cannot yeah. be super duper aggressive because, yeah, they get to labeling us like that. But then we also can't be passive either. So we have to mm -hmm. be assertive. And within yeah. our assertiveness, we have to be transparent and authentic. I have gotten to a point where even on social media with my clients, I hold them accountable. And that's what it comes down to. You're not finna put the whole blame on me. I'm get. I'm mm -hmm. doing what you put in front of me, and I make clothing lines. Like that's mm -hmm. what I. That, that's what I do. That's my business. I create clothing lines for design. So I'm trying to help you create your vision. But at the end of the day, it's our partnership. I don't work for you. You don't work for me. So mm -hmm. I think that by holding people accountable to what they're doing, and even clients, like a client customer relationship is both ways. Yes, you're paying me, but I'm spending my time doing a service. So don't hit me with mm -hmm. the oh, I paid you good money, right? And you got good service. So what you talking about? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I say all that to say that do not be allowing these people like to run up. And I know you said you have been doing that no more but people will still try you no matter how far you excel in oh, business no matter how much you got behind you they will try you and try you try you and you got to be the one to be like hold on now i found myself like quietly being like hold on bitch <laughs> like <laughs> you still you got me messed up <laughs> I, 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 I just, I had a situation like it, it's a bunch of situations but yeah i'm like y'all not gonna rush me no more right you know, getting out pump, pumping stuff out in two three days but if you calling me because you know the industry is very last minute a lot of times uh -huh. so if i don't do that like, last minute shit like, <laughs> yeah they'll be like oh i need this in two days i tell them no i need at least at least four weeks in advance from what you request me you know what i'm saying because i you don't know what my, my schedule is looking like you know what i'm saying if it's no payment on the table we can't move forward with business like true mm -mm. Yeah. All right. So bef mm -hmm. before we wrap up, uh, my last segment is called It's a Muse. So if you just want to share um, anything that you feel like is, you know, an affirmation, a mantra, a quote, a prayer, anything that just keeps you going that you would like to share with another creative to continue to push them forward. Mm, um, I'm going to share with you something my professor always has told me, and I, I give the same advice to a lot of young creatives is, don't abandon your projects. Like, sure, take a break from it if you, if need be. However, don't abandon that idea because no idea is a bad idea. Um, that and then, I guess one of my scriptures is, uh, I think it's, uh, ooh, 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 I'm about to mess it up. Now, it's Songs of Solomon 4 and 7. You are all together beautiful, my love. There's no flaw in you. And that's been key I in my life that. just because... I think as creatives, we are so hard on ourselves. We are so hard on ourselves. We give, we don't give ourselves enough credit. Mm -hmm. And so with me, um, through my journey into being a full-time entrepreneur, designer, artist, I have to affirm myself and realize that I'm worthy and I'm beautiful just for me being me. Not the creative, right? Not, not just, just as me. the creative, not mm -hmm. just as the artist, but just as me. You know, and that is the reason why I'm in this room. That is the reason why I'm why I've gotten the opportunities that I've gotten because I am me, my whole authentic self. So those are the two two advice. And then also just give yourself grace, baby. Give yourself grace. We are all learning on this spinning rock I hear that. <laughs> all at the same time. So uh, like I said, as, like I said again, us as creators, we are always so hard on ourselves. But no more. Give yourself grace. Don't abandon your project. Sure, take a break from it. Or whatever, but don't abandon your projects and just realize that you are worthy just because you are you. I love you know that. Saying? So if you just want to end, uh, if you just want to throw out any upcoming things uh, for your brand, any events, anything, collaborations that you have going on um, that you just like to throw out there for people to look out for it, um, and um, of course throw out your social media handles. Yes, ma'am. Well, number one, my name is Chelsea B. Um, Instagram is Chelsea B. 128 that's c-h-e-l-s-e-a the letter b number 128 um few upcoming projects number one i just um officially am a i am officially a part of the jordan women's collective of 2023 so be on the lookout for that announcement or it should be announced by by now um number two i have a collection dropping with chicago fashion coalition 
entitled Give Them Their Flowers is paying homage to my great grandmother, who I spoke about earlier. Um, and uh, she crocheted as well as um, paying homage to my great uncle, who was a part of the Black Panther Party. I'm all about giving people their flowers where they're living. Unfortunately, I was not, never able to meet them, so this is my way to give back to them um, in whatever capacity I can. Um, I and then, um, what else? Yeah, that's that's it so far. That um, well, you yeah. guys, oh, make sure then, you... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, no, no, I'm so sorry. So, so sorry. I was going to say, make sure you follow her. I'm going to put her name and in, in all that contact information in the show notes. <laughs> that's all I was going to yes, say. I, yes, again, Chelsea B128. Um, thank you so much again for having me. Oh, about say something that was insp- that inspired you. Too. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We had yes. a great conversation, and I just want to throw out to you: um, in April, um, April twenty eighth through the thirtieth is um, Black Fashion Month, but it's also my four year anniversary of my business, and I'm throwing a designer retreat in Chicago. So the wow. yes, yeah, so you'll find out. My, and I just followed you from our LC account too. Um, but it's going to be a big retreat uh, with a whole bunch of designers. So Friday is we're doing like in the self care. So there is no business at this retreat. None. I love no business. So Mon- uh, Friday is we're doing a sensual dance class with class with Chaz. She's based in Chicago. And I have curated drinks for the whole weekend. So we got like lavender cocktails and lemongrass cocktails. I have food catered for the whole weekend, infused and uninfused options. Saturday is facials, uh, massages. We're going to have a fashion panel with women pouring into you and your business more so on the manifestation side and in prayer as well. We're going to have a young lady doing henna tattoos. We'll have a full dinner and drinks there. And it's the whole day is all self-care. So facials, massages, we're doing um, guided meditation, we're doing yoga, and we have some amazing sponsors that are donating candles and robes and stuff. And then Sunday is going to be our farewell brunch. So if you're in Chicago, you should definitely be there. Oh, yeah. listen, I'm like, whoever listening, y'all need to be here for this. I'm going to be right. here. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, I def- and I'll shoot you a text with, like, all the information and stuff like that. And we have, like, seven different ticket levels. So you could buy Friday only, Saturday only, Sunday only. You could do all three, or you could mix and match, do Friday and Saturday. So all the breakdown of all the tickets and the days and the itinerary for the days is all there. All the food and drinks okay. are included for the whole weekend. And we even have a retreat house if you want to stay in our uh, uh, West Loop loft. If you want to continue oh. to, you know, uh, stack with creators, we're putting 20 people all in the house together and there's a whole bunch of creators for the weekend so that's an option as well is to stay in the retreat house you know I love that well I'll be looking more into that Mm -hmm. um because I was definitely trying to plan to go to a retreat somewhere and it still happened maybe that's alignment Mm -hmm. um and this one be this one is in your city (laughs) I know in my my city yeah look at God (laughs) yeah I gotta come home it's my anniversary it's time (laughs) yes you got to come on back and get a little bit of that shot right Mm -hmm. well thank you so much Chelsea I appreciate you and thank you for joining me today and as I always say guys stay black peace out stay black all right bye love have a good one bye